first I applaud them for getting on the ballot. There's not an easy thing in which to do, but a lot of it's deceptive advertising. Everyone's for health care reform, but once you get into specifics, people start to shy away. I think less than 40% of the public actually support now the latest version of health care reform. It's the same thing with reapportionment. You can list all the problems, and that's understandable. But when we call these folks in to pass a constitutional amendment, not a simple law, but a constitutional amendment that will forever affect Florida, they couldn't answer the most basic question of how it would actually work. They admitted they could not draw the lines. And so we've challenged them to say, look, here's all the information, here are the rules, help us draw these lines. I mean, is this designed just to fail, or are we trying to really solve a problem? And remember, in the Constitution, we just have two requirements. Once every year, we pass a budget. Once every 10 years, we do reapportionment. Clearly, we have shown that this plan is great in theory, like I teach in a classroom, but it's totally different in putting in those wheels into action and make sure this is an operational plan. And it's also clear that African-American minority representation in general will diminish should this plan pass. I think it's bad for Florida because if you're for something, you and I have talked for years, if I'm for something, I'm on your show. We're talking about it. We're having a lively debate. If you're for something, why wouldn't you come out and have this lively debate? Because that's what democracy is all about. The interchange of ideas and the best ideas rise to the top. Not cliches. We're past bumper stickers. We need to have a real discussion and the willingness to exchange ideas instead of this, let's just say, political circus that's going on currently. Uh, in any reapportionment process, gerrymandering has got to occur to achieve constitutional mandates. Is that not correct? In other words, to allow for proper minority representation. So gerrymandering in and of itself is not a bad word. Is that correct or not? Well, I think that word has been thrown around very loosely, gerrymandering. The fair district folks, if you can even call it that, have even said they're allowed to gerrymander for some but not others. That's not what America is all about. We've got a set of rules set in place since 1962, backed up, <clears throat> backed up by court decisions. Why wouldn't we follow that? That's federal law, United States constitutional law, court cases, and we know how to do it. Because for one of the few times in history, government worked in 2002 when we drew the lines. Why can't we do that again? I think it's a, all in the eye of the beholder, but it's pretty clear given the fact that over 95% of the money that went to back fair districts is from left-wing groups, that what the agenda is. Let's have an open, transparent process just like we're doing now, and let's have a lively debate as opposed to just running behind the bumper sticker of fair districts. Again, everyone's for fair districts. But when you play games like this with the Constitution, you're undercutting what our founding fathers believed in, and that's where the elected representatives draw the line so the people truly have one person and one vote.